So, as I said, m my name is Lukas, and here is Shimon. We both work for Tieto, and Tieto provides um, IT and uh, software engineering services around the world. Uh, we both are really close to local connectivity area, working with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and NFC. Daily, we work with our clients, supporting them in developing and maintaining local connectivity solutions. But we also do some kind of um, side work. I mean, we, we try to explore new technologies. And thanks, our company help us with doing this. So Bluetooth Low Energy, what's that? This is, you can think about it like a completely new protocol stack, which is creating a new branch of use cases with uh, peripheral devices which, uh, which, are, which gives you possibility to get a lot of different data. They, the devices having different sensors you can use in a, in a fitness area, in a healthcare area, or home entertainment. It's, uh, you, before it was, it was ARIA only for, uh, for Ant Plus and Zigbee, but now Bluetooth goes into this area as well. Uh, so low, as, as the name is low energy, so this, this solution provides a, um, I mean, the, the main idea is that devices, the preferred devices will be staying on the one cell battery quite quite long, like half a year, and that you can quite easily and fast connect to those devices. Like comparing to the standard Bluetooth, the connection time is six milliseconds, comparing to 100 milliseconds. But uh, with this also goes some limitations. There is lower throughput. Uh, in the application layer, you can have like 300 kilobits per second um, instead of two megabits per second and also lower range, which is 50 meters instead of 100 meters, which you could have with standard Bluetooth. But yes, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy is, um, was quite interesting for us, mainly because almost all smartphones at the moment on the market has uh, chips at ready for Bluetooth Low Energy. But unfortunately, there is a lack in between. I mean, there is host does not support it in Android devices. So basically, how it looks like. So basically, at the moment, there is no standard Google API for Bluetooth Low Energy. And if you are an application developer, you, you actually don't know how to start. There is a couple of solutions um, provided by different vendors. One of them is a Broadcom who provides uh, API, and API is, um, you can access this on the website. But when it comes to this API, it's a it gas-based API, which means that if you want to write application above of it, you, you need to have knowledge about Bluetooth, about, Bluetooth, about how, how GAT works, how to play with characteristics. So, so you need to have uh, you need to go through the specifications. Uh, it's not such easy that you just create an object which gives you some kind of um, data which you can show on the screen. Mm. And with this API also, mm, this API works only with, with Broadcom Bluetooth stack. And of course, not all devices have this. And also, this, this API requires some framework changes which, which are not in every phone. I mean, even with, um, with, with Android 4.2, where the standard um, default Bluetooth stack is Broadcom at the moment, uh, this, this distribution lacking in the framework changes, which allows you to use this Broadcom API. Other solution available on the market at the moment is a Qualcomm solution, I mean, called Aurora. Forum provides this uh, code, and uh, this is closer, I mean, it's closer to community because uh, it um, it's uses Bluesy stack, uh, but this stack is highly modified. Uh, modified. Uh, 
Uh, also, framework um, requires a lot of uh, changes. I mean, Code Aurora Forum provides framework with a lot of changes. It means that if you want to have this, you want to have this uh, solution, you need to rebuild all project to, to build uh, to, to and a flash your form. And also this, this uh, API has a gut base API and was really connected to Bluezy API. And also the same as with Broadcom, you need to have knowledge about how to play with characteristics and how to use it. Mm, and to, when it comes to 4.2 uh, support, then it looks, looks like um, we look a bit into this code, and it looks like uh, the Broadcom Blue Droid solution, which is the default one for the 4.2, is now disabled, and they just roll back to 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 the 4.1. So it means that the whole framework part is the old one. Uh, the the whole uh, whole Bluetooth hole, which is which comes with the 4.2 Android, uh, is reverted, and the whole solution is used. And there's a Motorola API, which is which is actually quite nice. I mean, uh, it's profile-based API, so that means that application developer does not really have to know a lot about the technology. You just need to create the object and get the data callbacks with the data ready to show on the on the screen and uh, as we as we investigate this api this it is above the this is above the code which was developed by by qualcomm so basically uh, it was it is like the mm, how to say this I mean, basically, it was the the Coder forum code has been used in for, for Motorola solution. So I would say that this Motorola API is above the Qualcomm solution, and wrapping this and provides the provides the the high higher API for developers. Yeah, the only problem is that that Qualcomm solution is not fully ready, and this is what they also state on the website. And when we tried it, we, we also noticed it, that there's quite a few issues when you try to connect, reconnect, and etc. And of course, for, for, for uh, four point two Android, this not I, I, I don't think it's a good solution. So I want to tell you how, how we start with our heart rate profile for Android. I mean. One day we we bought the Polar device. At that time it wasn't so easy to get such, but we managed to do it. We bought the Bluetooth 4.0 USB dongle, and we start playing with it on on PC with a with a, a Linux on it. So we use Bluezy. We found some different problems like like. Uh, the, so, some kind of issues when you fail to connect and the management, inter, the management uh, state was wrong in the kernel, or uh, I have, to, or for example, the, that only one connection could, co only one atom to connect could be done uh, during the. I mean, stack was in a bad state. I mean, uh, like you could send couple connect requests and stack get into bad states. And some other quite simple issues. And um, yeah, we just fix it. We put the, we send the patches upstream and, um, and we get the idea, why, to, why don't do it on uh, Android? And yes, our company actually agree on it. And we start looking more into do it, how to do it into Android, how, what kind of ideas how it should work. So our idea, yeah, our, we had like three principal mm, requirements which we put on ourselves. I mean, our code uh, should be close to upstream. Uh, we didn't want to do 
a lot of changes to OSP. I mean, the goal was to not do, to do no, no changes for in OSP code. So you could take our solution and, uh, and install it on your, on your device without rebuilding the whole system. And also isolate framework and application changes if possible. So to, to, to keep the upstream, to keep code close to upstream, we had to solve the problem with the kernel since kernel running on uh, our device was, was 2.6, 32, 32. And uh, to have a support for Bluetooth Low Energy in the kernel, we had to use something newer. I think from tr it's fr from starting from 3.5, the Low Energy is enabled um, in the kernel. You could use older kernel, but you had to manually enable it, Bluetooth Low Energy. So, so we use compact drivers for it. Um, we basically build a newer Bluetooth solution from the compact drivers. Mm, then we get. Then we have to thought about the bluesy, how to, which release to take. And on ICS, um, I mean, at the time we started, bluesy 5.0 wasn't uh, available. I mean, even now it's, it's. I don't think it's in a good shape to 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 take it. So we, what we good, what we did is, um, mm, we did we. We take the, all the changes from Blue Z4 101 before the API has changed. It was also easier for us to do it because mm, we didn't want to change the existing uh, Bluetooth path, like the Bluetooth even loop, which, uh, which handles all the communication between Blue Z and the uh, upper layers. So we want to keep it untouched. Uh, yeah, so once we take this uh, latest, yeah, latest uh, Blue Z, we also had to think about the Android specific um, code, which was always in the Blue Z. And for this, we, we, we decided to create a special plugin which handles all the specific, specific uh, tasks, like uh, setting properties, the name, also getting RFCOM channel for the application. So. It, it, we put it like as a plugin which keeps it nice in a stack. And the, the only thing we had to add at that time was we, we had to expose get connect and disconnect uh, on Dbus. It was mm, yeah, in the brackets you have read, here's written that for generic get API, but not only if we, when we use them. Uh, when we use the watchers, I mean, when you register on watchers for the specific the profiles, low energy, low energy profiles, then then we had to trigger connect to to GAT anyway. So that's why we need it. But also we thought that uh, it might be useful in the future when we want to expose also GAT API for the application if they would like to use it. And and hardware profile, we implemented it in Daemon and we upstream it after a couple of refactors. Mm, and yeah, mm, that would be that. So basically, this is how, how the solution looks like. I mean, here we use the compact drivers, which we built in the kernel. Then uh, we did modification in Bluesy Daemon, creating the heart rate uh, plugin, heart rate profile. Then we, yeah, as I said, we want to keep it separate. I mean, we didn't want to put any code here. So what we did, we create other sec second uh, dbus loop here. And f this way goes all the, all the mm, BLE communication. Then we create the, the helper components here which uh, register watchers for the plugins here, for the uh, profiles here, and GAT device which wrap those things. And this GAT device was some kind of proxy application bins to it, and 
get the profile he wa wants. So we provide two profiles at that time, the heart rate profile and cycling profile. So the application gets this profile and automatically get uh, um, all the callbacks with uh, which provides the the data, um, which are ready ready to to show on the screen. So it is. So our idea actually has been fulfilled with this solution. And here comes demo. <laughs> I don't want to show you how excited I am staying here. So <laughs> I don't show you my real heart rate at the moment, but if you want to, uh, if you want to take a chance and check your heart rate, I can do it uh, after this presentation. So, so we, we use the Nexus, Galaxy X with Nexus, and this Polar device. You can see, yeah. And then Android dot two has come, and everything has changed. I mean, good things and bad things. Ashimon will tell you more about it. Okay. What? Okay. So uh, with uh, Android four point two, there was. Uh, a big revolution regarding uh, Bluetooth subsystem. Let me first uh, describe you what has changed. Basically, Google just ripped off all Bluesy stack and replaced it with a Broadcom, so, well, open source solution from uh, Broadcom. So uh, <coughs> the new stack is called uh, Bluetroid. It's a totally different solution compared to uh, Bluesy stack. It doesn't use Dbus, for example. It is uh, not a system daemon running on, uh, on a device. It's a thread inside uh, a uh, virtual machine. But uh, they make some of uh, nice changes related to adding an abstraction layer for a Bluetooth stack running uh, below. So uh, BTHAL API was introduced, which uh, wraps, um, which provides uh, callbacks for uh, basic Bluetooth stuff like uh, getting adapters properties, getting device properties, uh, some pairing stuff like confirming passkey, entering pins code, and, and so on and so on. Uh, what is different in this stack is it doesn't use a standard HCI interface, uh, which is commonly used on Linux. And uh, it doesn't use um, kernel subsystem, Bluetooth kernel subsystem. So the stack is totally uh, user space based. And uh, at the beginning, we thought, OK, maybe the stack has a nice low energy implementation because Broadcom advertised that. But we did some investigation. And unfortunately, there was no uh, low energy API fra in framework. So, uh, for application, from application point of view, uh, it was basically the same as in previous releases. And uh, we thought that maybe, maybe just uh, configuration, as you say, because there was some configuration flags like enable GAT, enable uh, secure manager. But when we enabled those flags, basically BlueDroid stopped building. There were some missing files, missing headers, some functions were strip of functions, of functionality. So it basically looks like um, Broadcom just removed low, low energy support from stack before uh, open sourcing it. So, uh, and also the uh, HAL API that was introduced doesn't uh, contain any low energy related functionality in it. So uh, we decided what, what we can do about that. And we thought, let's try with Bluesy one more time. So, uh, why, why we thought about that? First, it has a full, pretty, well-working uh, low energy support in it, including number of profiles that uh, we can have out of the box. It is um, <coughs> community driven, so we can uh, influence the way it is developed more or less, like uh, upstreaming new profiles, which we will have uh, maintenance from community. And thanks to the BT HAL introduction, we can try to minimize the impact of switching uh, stack under the hood, for, uh, at least for a framework part. 
And the other things was that we could use uh, some of our solution from ice cream sandwich and jelly bean 4.1. I mean, uh, uh, the framework uh, upper layers like profile, uh, API, and so on. <clears throat> so there is uh, some risk, unfortunately, related to that switch. Basically, we want to have uh, no regression in functionality related to classic Bluetooth support. And I will talk about this uh, risk a bit more, a bit later. Um, one nice thing about uh, BlueZ5 is that it doesn't require any configuration files anymore in uh, ATC folder. So uh, we can make it a configuration based uh, purely in runtime. So this is good uh, because we don't need to put any extra files on file system. So the integration is even smoother. So uh, how, how we try to approach the problem? Basically, we need to re-enable stuff that was disabled due to Blue Droid integration. So we enable the HCI interface basically by uh, restoring the HCI attach service that brought us a standard uh, kernel interface for user space. Uh, we follow uh, the same approach as was uh, described by Wukash for uh, previous releases. So we use compact drivers to get uh, latest and greatest uh, Bluetooth subsystem for kernel. We, because uh, low energy support is still uh, being developed, new features are added, so we wanted to have a uh, latest code. We need to re enable the deepest daemon. Fortunately, the code was not removed, so we just had to add it to uh, init to start it, and that was it. And next thing was uh, bringing BlueZ5 back to Android. So, um, what we decided was that uh, we don't want to go with uh, old bluesy legacy stuff like uh, for uh, for uh, API that was used in uh, previous releases. We don't want um, Android modification that was done by Google for uh, the fork of uh, bluesy 4 branch. Uh, so uh, basically, we took upstream version. At that time, it was point, uh, 5.2 release. We added the make file and cross compile it and run it. So uh, the state is now we have uh, running dbus, running bluesy, standard interface uh, enabled, so we can go into upper layers. And uh, so what, what we need to do? We need to uh, have a BT HAL implementation, basically, that hooks into a, a HAL and uh, talks to Bluesy through Dbus. So we prepared a sort of a wrapper library, call it Tieto BT HAL. And uh, I will explain in a moment how, how it looks inside and why we choose that, that way. Um, so a bit more details. Basically, we didn't want to make a mistake that Google did when they uh, implemented support for BlueZ4. That is, we didn't want to have a hard-coded implementation of uh, JNI framework that directly uses uh, libdbus to talk to BlueZ because uh, that was problematic due when some API changes, if you want to extend it, that uh, you have to do a lot of uh, coding with a low level library like libdbus is. So we created a abstraction layer library. We call it BTIL of abstraction layer, which basically wraps the dbus into a simple C API. So uh, it hides all the implementation details like running uh, event loop, having a dbus connected, and so on. Mm. We used a really cool tool called uh, gdbus codegen to generate those APIs. So uh, we didn't have to write, um, write every single uh, C wrapper for a dbus call. So as much as possible, the code is auto-generated during the build, 
we just provide some threads to run the, the loop and so on. And um, we also didn't want to make uh, too much modifications for a BT HAL API. I will explain later why. So basically, we decided that we will try to uh, extend the get profile interface call from the BT HAL so that we can expose extra uh, profiles from a low energy like heart rate or cycling speed or whatever. So uh, I will now explain what are the risks of uh, going with uh, Bluzy. There is a problem that basically Bluzy 5 is uh, one of uh, components of a uh, whole network stack, let's say, from uh, Intel. So uh, when you want to go with Bluzy, you have to probably take Ofono, uh, Conman, and other standard tools, let's say. And we didn't want to do that for Android. So um, there is a problem basically with A2DP support. Uh, Bluzy 5 is using uh, Dbus Media API. Which, is, uh, which allows other process to uh, handle multimedia processing over Bluetooth. So there is no uh, ALSA plugin like it was in Bluesy four times when you just loaded the plugin and it handles all, all for you. Basically, in, open, in uh, standard Linux, uh, this is handled by Pulse Audio. We don't have Pulse Audio here, so uh, our idea is to make a plugin, also plugin that will have its own Dbus uh, loop and will try to wrap the media API into a, a plugin that can be used by Audio Flinger. But uh, there was a presentation today about using Pulse Audio on Android, so maybe it will go that way. So that would be a, if if we would have a running Pulse Audio in Android, then we have a media API support for free because Pulse Audio, I think version 3, supports that out of the box. So that's uh, one of the risks we, we need to still solve. The other one is uh, headset and hands-free profile. And that's a bit complicated because basically in Bluesy four times, uh, all the hands-free AT command parsing was done in a plugin inside Bluesy. Now, uh, Intel guys decided that the right place to do AT parsing is Ofono, which is uh, uh, a modem, which is a modem daemon that, hand that handles uh, modems uh, and so on, which is not that bad decision if you run Ofono on your system. So we still need to think how to, how to solve it because uh, normally Bloodroid does AT parsing. So we have a missing block here. We will probably end up in um, reusing some code from Ofono as probably a plugin inside uh, Bluesy to, to handle that. And uh, the other risk is that we uh, don't know what Google do. I mean, uh, we don't know when and if they will prov provide any Low, level, low energy solution in their stack. So we, we might end up in having some conflicts inside APIs and so on. That's the reason why, par partly why we decided to have, to reuse all the standard components. Because th thanks to that, we have uh, our changes kind of nicely separated from, from Google code. So we don't mess up with uh, framework. We don't mess up with uh, Bluetrooid itself. Uh, we basically just disable those parts of codes and use our own solutions. And uh, this uh, 4.2 low energy support is still work in progress. So uh, we don't have anything to show you how on a running device. Uh, we hope to have something ready for a next uh, Bluetooth uh, unplug fest, and uh, I think it's in June. So w maybe we'll show them show there and try to do some IoT testing with uh, running Jellybean and, and Bluesy stack. 
we'll see. Uh, the main reason is that this is a sort of a side project for us. It's some kind of uh, research when we try to explore new possibilities with, with this low energy support. Mm, maybe also if I would say a few words why, why we decide to go with Blues in the first place. Basically, um, besides those points that were uh, described before, uh, implementing a stack inside Bluesy gives us uh, support also on other Linux systems, uh, Linux systems like uh, standard distributions or uh, Tizen, for example, or, or any other uh, system that's using Bluesy. And this makes um, a bit less fragmentation in Linux world. So you have one implementation. When you fix a bug in a Bluesy running on Android, you have the bugs fixed on other systems as well. And uh, that, that should uh, improve the IoT a bit. And um, last thing is that we, we wanted we want that solution to be easy f to integrate into uh, people's projects. So we, we want to make a, uh, we want, we, we want uh, to have a very easy solution, solution to uh, enable low, uh, low energy support in custom projects. So we try to wrap everything inside the build config flags. So what, what will, uh, let's say you have some product uh, based on Android IOSP and you want to have a low energy support. So basically you will have to synchronize with a repository. It's not available uh, on the net yet. I don't know if it will be or not, let's see. And basically in, in your board config file, you would have to define a new flag. It's now called board have Bluetooth Bluesy, which will basically enable building Bluesy and its components and disable Blue Droid. Uh, another change required will be uh, init file modification because you have to run HC attach service, uh, dbus daemon and, and Bluesy daemon. And if you are using custom kernel, you would have to integrate compact drivers. If not, we basically have a make file that is using a, a IOSP kernel without any modifications, just uh, attach compact drivers module and uh, you have a running solution. So that's basically the main idea. Mm, what, what is done now, oh, sorry, what's done now is that we have a daemon running. We have uh, pretty much ready the wrapper library and working on uh, BT Hull. So uh, in a month or two, we should be ready to try, uh, try to show in some working solutions. And uh, I think that's basically all we have uh, to share to you. So if you have any questions or ideas or uh, critics or whatever, it's welcome. <laughs>